And now, the joy of annotating with Bob Ross Pastor. Hello boys and girls, I'm Bob Ross Pastor and I'm here to annotate with you today. We got our happy little text, our happy little brush. And I don't know about you, but I think it's a little too dark in here. Let's go shine some fluffy little light on that. That's a little better. We've got our canvas here. We've got our colors. So let's go through these colors and see what they are. We're going to run them across the bottom of the screen. All these happy little colors. We're going to have State Champ Black. We've got State Champ Black with us today. Forgot to turn the music down. It's not a mistake, just a happy little accident. We've got Woke Up Feeling Dangerous Brown, somewhere around here. No Hawk Blue. St. McPatrick Green. Spray Tan Orange. Yeah, you knew that was coming. Aquafina Teal. Because everybody needs some mineral water. Just cascading little waves it's just are so fluffy and gentle to your soul Propecia purple for all our people with acid reflux out there Chase Conley red you know why just look at that hair all red no soul and because it's fall we might even have some sinus infection green now let's get into it Speaking of infections, we're going to talk about patriarchy today because when we look at the text and we look at the headline, and what I'd like you to do is annotate along with me, please, out there in TV land. Thank you, by the way, for letting me into your happy little home today. Disappointment is the Lot of Woman by Lucy Stone. Now, I didn't know Lucy Stone. I'm not that old, but maybe Mr. Bull is. Huh. This is from 1855, and immediately we've got some context. The National Women's Rights Convention. Restrain yourself, David. It's 1855, so let's draw a nice little symbol around 1855 to kind of illustrate that happy little context. Women. not good. My friend Jordan Peterson said it's, it's a bloody shame. He's a lot harsher than I am. Opposites attract. And this is the National Women's Rights Convention in Cincinnati, Ohio. thing you have to remember about Cincinnati is, well, they lost to the Browns last night. This Baker Mayfield woke up feeling dangerous. And Cincinnati was a big city in America in 1855. Because it's on the Ohio River, the Good River. It flows right by Bob Ross's house in Muncie, Indiana. But let's get into the text, please. Come on. Come on. Scroll down here. Happy little scrolling. I'm going to have to kind of just erase these little markings. So when you do that, you just want to, you know, just get the brush like right on the whiteboard. Don't worry about if there's any liquid white on that painting. It's okay. Okay, and now the fun part we get to take out all our hostilities. I like that, just beat the devil out of it. But let's get back from the first years to which my memory stretches. I have been a disappointed woman. Now we're going to take this aquafina teal, and I want you to tell me what's the tone. Use your annotation to tell me what's that tone and why. Why start by calling herself disappointed? Immediately, we have a woman upset. And those of you guys who have a girlfriend out there, which is maybe one of you, maybe two, that's not good. 
when with my brothers I reached forth after the sources of knowledge, I was reproved with, it isn't fit for you. It doesn't belong to women. Answer this question in your annotation because you're AP. Why this anecdote? What's the purpose? And how can the audience relate? Answer those questions, please, because you're AP and you don't need me to tell you. I was disappointed. Oh, looks like we got a happy little, or unhappy, little motif. When I came to seek a profession worthy of an immortal being, every employment was close to me except those of the teacher, the seamstress, and the housekeeper. Closed to me. There's nothing she did. But why phrase it like this? Answer that question in your annotation. The teacher the seamstress, the housekeeper. Why these examples? You answer that as far as her purpose is concerned and how it relates to the audience. Answer that. And you could pause the video to do that. That's just a happy little feature that God just threw onto the, to the keyboard for you. That little space bar can pause just about anything. Let's get into it. In education, in marriage, in religion, in everything, disappointment is the lot of woman. Again, why the parallelism? Answer that. And then why the repetition? Answer that. It shall be the business of my life to deepen this disappointment in every woman's heart until she bows down to it no longer. There we go. Now she's revealed her overall purpose here. Her overall purpose is to make mis women feel so miserable that they'll actually do something about it. As in that, that's not a mistake on her part. It's not a happy little accident either. It's a nice little plan. I wish that women, instead of being walking showcases, instead of begging of their fathers and brothers the latest and gayest new bonnet, that means happy, not allowed to be offended, would ask of them their rights. Why, first off in your annotation, what does she contrast? Right? And why? And I don't want to say that she ends with rights. I think she culminates with rights. Why culminate with rights? Why do that, boys and girls? What's so important about rights? Let's get into it some more. Next page. And again, we're going to take our big old eraser here. We're going to erase all those previous annotations. We're going to get into this next one. We might even have to do some erasing here. That's all right. And then you just take out all your hostility. Let's give these annotations some friends. The question of women's rights, nice little hook, is a practical one. Why? Analyze her word choice. Why does she call rights practical? Why is it more practical, more useful for women to actually have rights? The notion has prevailed that it was only an ephemeral or a vague idea. That it was but women claiming the right to smoke cigars in the streets and to frequent bar rooms. Now, I don't smoke cigars anymore. Boys and girls, that was back in a different life when I worked for someone else. But now Bob works for Bob. Let's get into it. Others have supposed it a question of comparative intellect. Others still of sphere. So why, boys and girls, why bring in 
all these happy little counter arguments. Give me two to three sentences on that, please. I'm not going to tell you why, because you're AP. You're elite. I don't have to. Trace all the doctrines to their source, and they will be found to have no basis except in the uses and prejudices of age. In other words, well, you tell me. Why ye explain it this way? Why is she blaming the usage of women, boys and girls? And why is she blaming unhappy little prejudice? This is seen in the fact that what is tolerated in woman in one country is not tolerated in another. Answer this question in your annotation. Why this example? How does it fortify, strengthen her argument? by bringing up what's going on in other countries. And you can go back and pause it if you didn't see that. And that's just like a happy little coincidence, boys and girls. In this country, women may hold prayer meetings, but in the Mohammedan countries, that's Islamic countries, our happy little friends in that happy little desert with all those fluffy dunes of sand, not a happy little tree inside, very lonely. Cactuses need friends. But let's go back to the Mohammedan countries. It is written upon their mosques. Women and dogs and other impure animals are not permitted to enter. So you tell me, what's your argument about global society? Boys and girls. Why bring that up? Why is she equating America with Mohammedans? What prejudices is she appealing to in her largely Protestant Christian audience? Answer that right now. Please just pause it. Give a happy little answer while I erase these happy little annotations. all attention out. Why bring up the father? What father? Her father? No. When he gives us the capacity to do anything, he does not make a blunder. That's right, folks. God doesn't make any blunders. Just happy little accidents. Like what Mr. Peanut left on the carpet for me this morning. It's a happy little accident. When he gives us the capacity to do anything, he does not make a blunder. Why appeal to theology? Connected to her argument and connected to her audience and the time period. This is in the middle of a second great awakening, boys and girls. Why do this then? Leave women then to find their sphere. Oh, looks like we've got a motif. So my question for you is, how effective, and you gotta be positive with it, how effective is this motif? What does she mean by sphere? She probably doesn't mean that happy little sphere of earth. She probably doesn't mean the geometrical figure. What does she mean by sphere? Maybe it's a sphere of influence. If so, why is she using that as a repeated motif? You can pause it and answer that right now real full. Don't tell us that we are born even. That our province is to cook dinners, darn stockings, and sew buttons. Cook dinners? Darn stockings and so buttons. Again, why these examples? How does that affect her argument? Answer that question in relation to her argument, boys and girls. And answer that question 
in relation to her audience. We are told women have all the rights they want. And even women, I am ashamed to say, tell us so. Oh, boy. Even women, tell us so. Dig into the exigence or the history. Make an annotation about how that was historically true. The idea that woman has all the rights that she wants. How does this appeal? Please analyze that. How does this appeal to the exigence, to what's going on at the time in 1855? And why does she structure it? We'll get Conley read. We want rights. Why does she word that so succinctly? So in your happy little annotation, why so blunt. Why is she so blunt with that, boys and girls? Answer that in your annotation. The flower merchant, the house builder, the postman charges no less on account of our sex. Notice that exemplification. But when we endeavor to earn money to pay all these, then indeed we find the difference. Man, if he have energy, may hew out for himself a path where no mortal has ever trod. Again, when you annotate this, why a financial example. Why is that, boys and girls? A man is held back by nothing but what is in himself. Let's go back to state championship black. The world is all before him. Where to choose? And we are glad for you, brothers men, that that is so. Oh, looks like we found a brother man. All men are our brothers. The women, too. Everybody's our brothers and sisters. Everybody needs a friend. I think these annotations need a happy little friend. Let's put our friend right here. Man may hew out for himself a path where no mortal has trod, backed by nothing but was in himself. Why this contrasting example? And what I want you to do is, with this annotation, boys and girls, is analyze the history. Is it historically accurate? And how's your audience going to react? And how does it strengthen her argument? I want you to answer all three of those. But the same society that drives forth the young man keeps woman at home, a dependent. But if she goes heartily and bravely to give herself to some worthy purpose, she is, there's that phrase again, out of her sphere. Why this motif, boys and girls. Why this motif? And over here, answer this question. Why this counterexample? Why is she providing this extended juxtaposition? Answer that. And why does it make her argument more effective? Answer that. All right, let's get back into it. Women working in tailor shops are paid one-third as much as men. Someone in Philadelphia has stated that women make fine shirts for 12 and a half cents a piece, that no woman can make more than nine a week, and the sum thus earned after deducting rent, fuel, etc., leaves her just three and a half cents a day for bread. Is it a wonder that women are driven to prostitution? Now here's what I want you to answer here. I want you to analyze how her examples built to the charged question. And that charged question is down here. That happy little question about that unha unhappy little profession, prostitution. Bob Ross doesn't know anything about that. Honest. But analyze how her examples built to that charged question. And remember, we're talking 1855. Okay? Think of the medical technology, how primitive it is, how poor their prescriptions are. Why is prostitution such a bad thing in 1855, especially in a Christian awakened America? Why would she bring that up to her audience? Answer all those questions. This should be at least three to five sentences here. Okay, three to five sentences. 
How did she build to that? Why did she build to it? Is she shocking her audience? If so, why is she shocking her happy little audience? Looks like we got one or two paragraphs left, depending on how much we want to do. Let's... But it looks like our screen is making a happy little accident right now. The present condition of woman causes a horrible perversion of the marriage relation. Why use that word perversion? How does that build off prostitution? Think about that. It asks of a lady, has she married well? Oh yes, her husband is rich. Woman must marry for a home. And you men are the sufferers by this for a woman who loathes you. That means hates. A woman who loathes you and may marry you because you have the means to get money which she cannot have. But when woman can enter the lists with you, the marriage, and make money for herself, she will marry you only for deep and earnest affection. Now what we have here, and we'll use our propitia purpose, we have an extended juxtaposition. And here's what I want you to do on this paragraph. I want you to do a few things. Number one, I want you to analyze how it works. Analyze how it works. I'm going to change over here to state championship black because everybody should. Then I want you to analyze why she picked it. Why did she decide to juxtapose the unhappy marriage where the woman hates her husband with the happy marriage where the woman adores her husband because she chose him, not because it was a financial transaction. Okay. And the next thing I want you to do is analyze its place. You're probably going to have at least nine sentences here. Why is this placed after the prostitution example? How is this first example here so well connected to the notion of prostitution? Be careful the words you pick. You don't want to be sent to guidance and unless you're Cooper and you do. Okay. And then why culminate with this? So analyze its place. Okay. Hit purpose. And most importantly, hit effect on the audience of women in America, in Christian America, in 1855. That's what I want you to do. So I'm not picking out every little thing, boys and girls, on that paragraph. I want you to do that. So pause the video right now and do your annotations. Okay, it gives me great pleasure to welcome you back for our last paragraph. And we get to get some of our hostility out one last time. I like erasing on the right. Liquid white. White form. Makes me feel good inside. Thing I don't like, all that dust. There's two things wrong with dust. Gives you allergies. And it's just too tall. All right. Look how she acknowledges, oh. We forgot to clean our brush. Let's have fun with that. Remember, God bust yours to keep it. Let's get into it. I am detaining you too long. Many of you standing that I ought to apologize, but women have been wrong for so long that I may wrong you a little. Remember, she said earlier she wanted to annoy them so that they would do something. A woman undertook in Lowell to sell shoes to ladies. Men laughed at her, but in six years she has run them out and has a monopoly of the trade. Sarah Tyndale, whose husband was an importer of China and died bankrupt, her husband died. That's not bad news for a woman. Continued his business, paid off his debts, and made a fortune and built the largest China warehouse in the world. So I want you to answer this question. 
why business examples? It looks like we're about to have an announcement. And I want you to connect to... Attention teachers, if you would like to come to the office, there are donuts and coffee here. Compliment the administration and the food service department. Now that's not a mistake. That's just a happy little accident. Connect that to gender prejudices in 1855. Take about two to three sentences to do that. Pause the video, get back into it. The widening of woman's sphere is to improve her lot. So here's what I want you to do. Underline that, and I want you to analyze why this is an effective theme or motif. Look up those words. What's it mean to have a theme throughout a decorative room? Treat it like a decorative room here. What's it like to have a motif in a series of artworks? And then answer that question in two to three sentences. Let us do it, and if the world scoff, let it scoff. If it sneer, let it sneer. Okay, so here's what I want you to do. Take a couple sentences, analyze her tone. And answer this question, boys and girls. Why so defiant? Why is she so defiant? But we will go emulating the example of Grimke and Abby Kelly, building credibility there with those historical references. When they first lectured against slavery, they were not listened to as respectfully as you listen to us. So the first female physician meets many difficulties, but to the next, the path will be made easy. And I want you to do a few things here. First off, I want you to translate. Translate that. What does she mean by that? Then, what's her purpose? What's her argument? And what effect is she trying to have on the audience? Then, and now. So that'll take you about four to six happy little sentences. I just want to thank you again for letting me illustrate this early feminist masterpiece for you on your Chromebook. It's been a happy, wonderful day. I wanted to introduce you to a little critter that we found here in the gutter. Mr. Gilbert found him. He said, I found this guy and couldn't figure out what he was doing out there. So he gave him to me. This is little Petey. Say hi, Petey. <sniffs> Petey's not very nice, but that's okay. He didn't make a mistake. Just a happy little accident. Have a happy little day, boys and girls. This has been the joy of annotating. With Bob Ross. <laughs>